lies in Josef's teaching and its results. When he was professor in Linz in Upper Austria from 1991 to 96, he invented a class that he called the Girard Reading Circle. He gave the first class of that title in the fall of 1992, and then every semester in Linz. Then he left for Innsbruck, became professor here, and guess what? His former students in Linz until this day meet for a long weekend every year to read and discuss Girard together. And they even call themselves the Linzer Girard Reading Circle. So Josef came to Innsbruck and he brought this class format with him from spring 2000 until spring 2016. He held his Gerard reading circle 22 times, if I counted correctly. Together with Linz, that makes a total of 30 times Gerard reading circle. I had the privilege and joy to be a member for some years. What did he do there? He chose one of Girard's works and read it together with the students. But what did reading it mean? It could mean sometimes that someone would literally read aloud a sentence or two, or it could mean that Joseph himself would paraphrase and summarize ten pages at once. But that was only the foreplay. The actual climax of this event <laughs> was the free-floating, almost brainstorming-like discussion that followed. What are the thoughts, feelings, association that Gerard's text evokes? What does he mean? What do his readers understand? What are its current repercussions and applications? No one could weave more intriguing nets of interrelated meanings and topics than Joseph himself. But we, his students, learned through him to read Gerard and to connect his thought to what we were dealing with in our work. There were students who hardly said a word for two or three semesters. And then suddenly, as if a knot had untied, they gave whole treatises on where and how mimetic theory was important to the topic of their master, of their doctoral thesis. And Joseph guided many students to their thesis. Again, if I counted correctly, it were, were until today 29 dissertations and 54 master theses. Of course, not all of them dealt with Gerard. Of course, for Josef, Gerard was always read in connection with Raimund Schwager's theology. But still, Josef made in Innsbruck and Linz Gerard's thinking known throughout the world. India, Indonesia, China, to mention only the furthest away. And, of course, his native Poland. His Innsbruck alumni will meet next week to discuss their fields of interest again with him, and they do this also every year, every second year here in Innsbruck, every other year at some place where some or where one of his alumni has his or her center of work now. This uh, group of alumni, they call themselves the International Colloquium on Dramatic Theology, and they are no rival to cover, because on the one hand they're much smaller, and also because Girard's thinking is an integral part of dramatic theology. This is the reason why I thought it would be suitable for cover to give a tribute to Josef. And I am very grateful to the Raven Foundation that they accepted this idea and sponsored this event and the subsequent buffet that I already mentioned. So after this rather lengthy introduction, let me briefly introduce our panelists. The first two are alumni of Josef's. Karin Peter is a research assistant in the field of religious education and catechetics at the Department of Practical Theology at the University of Vienna. She wrote her dissertation with Josef on the question whether apocalyptic texts engender violence or transform it. Today she will introduce the Festschrift that she and Matthias Mosbrucker edited for Josef and show him as a narrating theologian. Matthias Mosbrugger, 
who wrote his theological thesis on the rehabilitation of sacrifice in the discussions between Gerard and Schwager with Josef, for which he also received the Karana Prize for Theological Research. And before that, he authored an historical thesis about the political constitution and structures in his home state of Vorarlberg in the late Middle Ages. Now he works at the Institute of Biblical Studies and Historical Theology of our faculty. Regular attendees of COVER already know him from several conferences. Today, Matthias will take a closer look at how Josef avoided mimetic rivalry with his students in his teaching. Both Matthias and Karin are also co-editors of the collected works of Raimund Schwager. Last but not least, Wolfgang Palava, former president of COVER, former dean of the theological faculty in Innsbruck. He needs not really to be introduced. Wolfgang told me he met Josef for the first time in October 1979. Josef was already an assistant at our faculty, and Wolfgang was a freshman beginning his first semester. Wolfgang came the first day of the semester, October 1st, to hear Josef's beginner's introduction to academic work. But Josef didn't show up. He started his seminar a week later. Therefore, they didn't meet on October 1st, but on October 8th, 1979. This is probably why Wolfgang today does not talk about Josef as a teacher, but he talks about his understanding of the Eucharist and connects it to Virginia Woolf's novel, To the Lighthouse. I invite now the three speakers uh, to give their presentation in one block, each after the other. Then at the end, we give Josef a chance to respond, and then we will have a short general discussion so that the buffet doesn't turn too cold after that. Thank you, and please, Karin, start. Thanks for your kind introduction, Nikki. It's a pleasure for me to be here at this conference and especially to honor Josef Niewiedomski a little bit in this evening. Dear ladies and gentlemen, have you ever experienced Josef Niewiedomski as a speaker, at a lecture or even at a sermon? If so, you have probably experienced one of his most decisive qualities 